The Nissan Rogue has been quite a sales success at the Nissan showroom ever since this current generation came out back in 2014. Despite less than stellar reviews from myself, the automotive press, and even some consumers, the company managed to move over 412,000 of these in all of 2018. It was second only to the Toyota RAV4. So even though there's all new versions of the RAV4, of the Subaru Forester, of the CRV, of the CX-5, this week Nissan has sent me over the latest 2019 Rogue SL equipped with the Platinum package. Is this thing still any good if you guys are looking Looking for a compact crossover? That's what we're here to find out. So looking at the design of the 2019 Rogue, there isn't really much to report here. Nissan hasn't made any changes to this vehicle since I first showed you guys this car back in 2017 when it got a pretty extensive overhaul. But this monarch orange color definitely looks nice in this bright sunlight. You can see the front fascia has the corporate Nissan V-Motion grille. It's not the newest design language that we saw on the Altima, which I think looks a little bit more handsome, but nevertheless, it still stands out in its own unique way. If you guys are looking for LED headlights, you have to buy this top of the line SL trim with the premium package. Every other the Rogue will have just halogen headlights. Uh, the LED daytime running lights are going to be standard. You have an incandescent turn signal and then halogen fog lights if you guys go for the upper trims. Overall, the Rogue definitely still looks relatively nice looking if starting to get a little bit vanilla because you see so many of these out on the road. Now the Rogue, one of its strong suits is the fact that this is a little bit bigger than most of the competition. It's wheelbase at 106 and a half inches long and 185 inches long overall. It's a couple inches longer than vehicles like the RAV4, the CRV, the Subaru Forester. Now my tester uh, being an SL model has these unique looking 19 inch wheels in 225, 55 series tires. If you guys go for the lower trims, they will have a 17 inch wheel, which should help improve the ride quality if you guys are looking for a little bit smaller wheels. I think the wheels look great, especially with this particular exterior color. Now, when Nissan first launched this vehicle, uh, they offered a small third row seat and they actually took that option away uh, later in the years because I guess not very many people purchased it because it was a relatively small third row seat. And then at the back, you can see the styling uh, looks pretty much the same. They refreshed the taillights in 2017 with this kind of black finish to them. And then you have a Rogue uh, SL badge there. If this was all wheel drive, my tester is actually front wheel drive, but also have an all wheel drive badge. And then down here, no visible exhaust tips. They kind of just hide it under the bumper. Now the Rogue, one of the, another strong selling features is the fact that if you guys are looking for that foot activated tailgate, you only have to buy an SV trim uh, and up. A lot of the other trims or manufacturers make you pay considerably more for the fully loaded model. The power tailgate is a little bit on the slower side, but the Rogue, because it's a little bit bigger, has a pretty strong cargo area. You're looking at around 39.3 cubic feet of space with the second row seats up. If you fold down the seats entirely, Nissan says it's at around 70.8 cubic feet of space, which is a little bit short from what you get in the RAV4 and CRV. One cool party trick is this little underfloor storage area here, which is relatively deep. It adds a couple of cubic feet of space and you can also hide some things underneath the floor, which is definitely nice. So on the outside, Nissan hasn't made any changes to the Rogue for 2019, but let's step into the interior and see what they've done uh, for this year. As you can see, here is the current key fob for the Rogue. It's the same old Nissan key fob with their push button start intelligent access. If you guys go for the SV trims and up, you'll get this key with the remote start. So if you wanna activate that, just push the lock button once, push and hold the top arrow button, until the vehicle starts right up, which is definitely nice. If you wanna shut the engine off, just push and hold that top button again, and that'll shut off the engine for you. Now, as you approach the door handle of the row, you can see there is a button here on the outside of the door handle. If you touch that button, it'll lock the door. If you wanna unlock it, you have to touch the button again, and that will unlock the door for you. Now, my particular tester has what Nissan calls the SL Platinum Reserve Package. This is kind of what they, or this is how they basically say this is an additional $250 for uh, this nice looking orange leather with the you know contrasting stitching. It's overall a really nice cabin. The Rogue has always had a pretty nice cabin. 
Uh, no cooled seats. You can get cooled seats on some competitors, not the Rogue, only heated seats, but you do have a 10-way power adjustable seat. These are basically the zero gravity NASA inspired seats with the memory foam, so it's very comfortable. You also have a two-person memory function and more of that, you know, brown leather on the door panels there with some piano black plastic trim. Again, it makes a very nice first impression when you first open the door. Now getting inside, the Rogue has that typical nice easy step in height that people love so much with these little crossovers. And then when you want to shut the door, it still sounds relatively solid, even though this vehicle came out in 2014. It still makes, again, a very nice first impression, which is why so many people buy these Rogues uh, every year. Nissan sold, again, over 400,000 of these. Now, when you want to start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake, push the button here to fire up the engine. And it's still the same 2.5 liter four cylinder, not the newest engine that I've shown you in the Altima. The gauges, again, look pretty much the same. They're very Infinity-like from a couple of years ago. Surprisingly, the engine is very free revving, but again, we'll go into the test drive later on. We'll see how the uh, powertrain still works after all these years. Now, uh, this fully loaded version, again, has some relatively nice materials in here. I wouldn't call it class leading anymore. That really belongs to the Mazda CX-5, but you do have a soft touch dashboard on this upper portion over here. It's also real leather with real stitching on this driver's side uh, over here, which is definitely nice. It's hard touch plastic down here. Wasn't really expecting that to be any nicer than that. You can see it's a soft touch graining material on the door panel. You have a chrome accented door handle. Surprisingly, only uh, auto up down on the driver window. I was expecting it for the front window as well, especially in this segment. It's nice and padded right here. You have more storage over here. It's all hard touch plastic. More buttons over here to basically activate your sport mode and eco mode in the transmission. Don't like how Nissan buries it down here. You have a heated steering wheel. Again, buried down here, you can turn off the Pro Pilot Assist. Um, over here and then open up your rear tailgate, turn off the stability control. All those buttons are kind of buried down there, which I hope Nissan finds another location for in the next generation. As you can see, the steering wheel is that same nice flat bottom D-cut steering wheel that we've seen on other Nissan products. This basically turns on your Pro Pilot Assist where it turns on every 360 camera and all the sensors and whatnot. It works like the Infinity system that I've shown you before. We'll go into the test drive later. The steering wheel itself is tilt telescoping. It's heated on this particular trim. The gauges look Decently nice, you have a seven inch helper screen in the center there, no heads up display like you get on some competitors. This was added for 2018, it's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is added uh, for this newer head unit here. It's still very small, it's only a seven inch display where some competitors again have gone to an eight inch display and even some have gone to a 10 inch display. So Nissan again needs to work on this. The resolution looks nice though, you can see pulling up ways. Um, it, We'll open up in a second. Um, it looks fairly nice, just again, kind of a small screen, which is a little bit disappointing. Or you can also go to the Nissan navigation system, which again is pretty old, although it has been updated slightly. Uh, I will imagine most of you are probably going to end up using the Apple CarPlay anyway, so that's why most of you don't even get this embedded navigation. As you can see, there's the basically home menu display. You can kind of customize this to your liking. You have your different shortcut buttons over there. When you put the vehicle into reverse, uh, my tester has the 360 camera, which is definitely nice. Nissan calls it the around view monitoring. It has moving object detection, which is basically um, rear cross traffic alert. It has blind spot monitoring. It also has automatic uh, front and rear braking, which is definitely nice. It's all part of that Pro Pilot Assist package. All really great features. You have dual zone climate control. Uh, on this one, which is definitely nice. Lots of good, well-labeled buttons, although they are a little bit on the smaller side. Um, USB is down here. You have an electronic parking brake there with an auto hold. You can sort of fit your phone over here, although I wish there was a little bit more hidden storage. Some competitors offer a little bit more in that regard. Nissan gives you a traditional shifter here for the Xtronic CVT, which we'll talk about later in the test drive. Cup holders over here, a little bit more storage over there where you could te technically put your phone. Just uh, two level heated seats, no cooled seats like in some competitors. Nice and padded over here with another USB charging, a power outlet, and then decent storage down in there. The seats, again, I actually think they're really comfortable. This is what Nissans are known for, their zero gravity seats. Um, they also look relatively nice, like the brown combination. The glove compartment here, as you can see, it is a fairly huge size. It's uh, damped, but not lined with felt, so that's really great. Above you, this large panoramic sunroof is optional. Um, it definitely is one of the largest in the segment. The Rogue is one of the few vehicles that offers it. It's one of the key selling features of this vehicle. Now, overall, the interior makes a great first impression. It has the usual tech that you'd like in it. Uh, interior quality is average, you know, design is average, but again, it's one of the reasons why this vehicle is super popular, so Nissan has kept it relatively fresh and modern over the years. 
So the current Rogue has been extremely popular with families, and there's a simple reason. When you get into the back seat here, first of all, the doors, they open extremely wide to allow you easy access if you guys are gonna install a child seat back here. And then when you get back here, there's a plentiful amount of space. Nissan rates the actual legroom here at 38 inches of legroom, which is pretty much at the top of the class. You have a nearly flat floor here. You have a USB-C and a regular USB and then air vents on this particular top trim. I also like the fact that there's two map pockets. The big panoramic sunroof lets in a lot of light. Now this seat actually does allow you to recline it forward and back just a tad. You can't, you can also actually slide it forward and back to accommodate that old third row that they used to offer. And then if you guys are looking for an armrest, this also folds down to give you two cup holders, although I don't like how it's not actually padded right here where I would rest my elbows. You're kind of ending up having to rest it on this hard touch plastic area. Now, a couple of features I am noticing that's missing, no rear seat sunshades and then no heated rear seats, which would have been a nice addition. But overall, families, young families especially, looking to put a car seat back here, the Rogue is one of the best ones in the segment. So under the hood of the current Rogue, most of you are probably gonna purchase this vehicle with the standard engine. There's actually a hybrid available with a two liter engine, that, that's a different review. This is the same QR25DE 2.5 liter four cylinder that we've seen for over a decade in a lot of Nissan products. And it makes relatively okay numbers. It's definitely starting to fall behind. 170 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque. Keep in mind, Nissan has a newer version of this engine, the Altima, which makes like 12 more horsepower. I would really love to see Nissan put a turbo in this thing, a two liter turbo, but we'll see what they decide to do for the next generation. Now the road only comes with an Xtronic CVT transmission. No manuals available. It'll tow up to 1,100 pounds, which is pretty paltry even for this class of vehicle. I think the top one is about uh, two to 3,000 pounds. This vehicle weighs around 3,500 pounds. It's 100 pounds lighter because it's all-wheel drive. And fuel economy is actually not bad. 26 in the city, 33 on the highway for this front drive model. It drops to 25, 32, which is mid-pack if you guys go for an all-wheel drive, all drive model. Of course, this uses regular gas. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. So over 400,000 people bought a Rogue in 2018. Were they crazy or is Nissan onto something? Now I haven't actually driven a Rogue in a couple years and I imagine this is probably the last time I'll drive this current third generation because Nissan is working on an all new version, most likely for, most likely for 2020. This is their best selling model. They'd be foolish to not be offering a new version uh, very soon. Now overall, the driving dynamics of the Rogue is definitely nothing super special. If you guys basically don't value um, fun to drive performance at the very tippy top of the totem pole of your you know important factors the rogue is basically going to satisfy that this is a car that really puts comfort and numb um, and just kind of lacking in annoyances as the top priority the powertrain in this car is that 2.5 liter four cylinder with a CVT. You can also get a hybrid in certain states if you also like the hybrid or want you know better gas mileage. This is the combination that most people buy and Nissan has definitely tuned it, tuned it to feel peppy off the line. But unfortunately, when you get it out onto the highway and then put your foot down, you really feel the lagginess of you know the fact that it's a CVT, it's a four cylinder. Um, the CVT itself is generally responsive enough. I'm happy with, you know, every time I put my foot down, it's quick to adjust the ratios, get the engine into the meat of its power band, and it starts accelerating, and it also will mimic shifts. But again, it's just kind of um, amplifying the drone of the four cylinder, which is not a pleasant noise in general. The Rogue itself drives fine. I mean, once you get it out uh, at cruising speeds, this is still a pleasant driving crossover. It sits up nice and high. The ride is nice and comfortable. The seats are also comfortable and uh, it's quiet in here when you're not pushing the engine. It's fairly, fairly nice. The ProPilot Assist that Nissan introduced in 2018 in this car um, is basically their latest in terms of driver assistance tech. It will actively steer you into a lane. It'll basically beep at you all the time when you're tailgating people. It also has full speed range adaptive cruise control. No paddles on the wheel, but there is a sport mode um, down here, which is buried. It should be by the steering wheel or down here. It's hard to see. When you put it into sport mode, you basically just notice that the CVT is a little bit more eager to get out of its top ratios for fuel economy. But the Rogue will cruise along all day long at highway speeds and get pretty decent gas mileage and ride comfortably. You can see out of it very well, very good visibility throughout the cabin, which is definitely great. Big side mirrors, good view out of the front, good view out of the back, comfortable cabin. So again, it's easy to see why this is a top seller in the segment. This is second only to the Toyota RAV4 in terms of sales. It outsold the Honda CRV, it outsold the Mazda CX-5, it outsold the Ford Escape, it outsold the you know GM twins. So obviously Nissan is onto something 
Uh, what I would like to see them do is add some driving fun to the equation, some something a little more character overall, something that makes it feel a little bit more special, a little bit more high end. But overall, I mean, again, pretty decent acceleration in zero to 60 times or most likely around the low eight second range, which is again, pretty decent. You could credit that to the CVT uh, for it, you know, being relatively responsive. It's not the transmission of choice for enthusiasts, but for the people who buy this thing, you're gonna find it to be relatively uh, adequate in most of your daily driving situations. Now, when you start taking corners in the Rogue, this is again, it's soft suspension is going to remind you that you didn't buy a Mazda CX-5. It's numb and devoid feeling steering, also are very slow to react. So again, you're not gonna be going anywhere in a hurry with the Rogue, but that's not its mission. So again, you need to put your priorities into perspective when you want a crossover like this. Do you want something that's more fun to drive? Or do you want something that's full of technology and features at a really strong value that's a roomy in cabin? It's a relatively smooth ride. This is what the Rogue is all about in terms of its strengths. Attacking high rate off ramps or on ramps, you're not gonna be doing that in a Rogue. You're gonna be buying the Mazda CX-5 or Honda CRV, or hell, even the Toyota RAV4 does it a little bit better than the Rogue. Now, this will handle you know, fairly well. It has some decent limits, but it just doesn't really inspire much confidence uh, when you're doing so. Now, let's do a full throttle acceleration run. My tester is a front wheel drive version, has a little bit of wheel slippage. It's in sport mode right now, and as you can hear, it is mimicking shifts, but it eventually gets us up to 60. <laughs> you just gotta be patient, but hey, totally adequate. Love to see Nissan do a turbo engine for the next generation, but I have a feeling it'll just have the same powertrain that's in the refreshed Altima, which is probably what Nissan's gonna do. They're probably gonna play it safe, but who knows? They may eventually surprise us. Now, in terms of the fuel economy, that CVT is awful for enthusiasts, but it's really good at getting good gas mileage. I've been averaging around 23 and a half MPG in my week's worth of testing. I got it up to about 31 MPG on the highway. Not bad, not really class leading anymore, but it's straight mid-pack. That's everything about the Rogue. The current generation has really fallen into mid-pack for everything. It doesn't really you know, do much that it annoys you. It doesn't really do much to inspire you. Again, that's the whole point of the Rogue. It's one of the reasons why it appeals to over 400,000 people every year. It's still a pleasant driving crossover, just not the most stylish, but it is packed full of features. I mean, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you have the Pano sunroof, you have 360 camera, you have comfortable seats, a comfortable ride quality, a spacious interior, and Nissan dealers, I've seen them discount this car by as much as five to $7,000, depending on your area, so don't quote me. But I just know in the DC area, I've seen Nissan dealers discount this thing heavily, which will offset the slightly higher uh, price tag if you get with these fully loaded uh, models. So despite all the new competition from the Toyota RAV4 and Subaru Forester this year, the current generation Nissan Rogue still offers a lot to like for families looking to purchase a compact crossover SUV. From its spacious cabin, nicely appointed interior, generous cargo area, and competitive safety features, the 2019 Nissan Rogue should easily find its way onto most people's short lists. Really where the Rogue continues to fall short is in the overall driving dynamics. Its buzzy four-cylinder engine, sluggish acceleration, and fun sapping seat CVT transmission make this car feel like an appliance in day-to-day -day driving. Thankfully, those particular weak spots aren't really why people buy these small SUVs, and it'll be interesting to see how this car continues to stack up sales-wise for the 2019 model year. Speaking of which, Nissan is working on an all-new version, likely, likely to show up for the 2020 model year. But until then, if you're looking to purchase a 2019 Rogue, what's it going to cost? Well, the base Rogue S starts at a very competitive $24,920, at about $1,350 for all-wheel drive. Most of you probably want to upgrade to the SV trim 1400. It adds that motion activated power lift gate and remote start, but if you really want everything, you'll need to go for my front wheel drive SL trim, which starts at $31,390 and comes standard with Nissan's Pro Pilot Assist, embedded navigation, 360 degree camera, and leather seats. The monarch orange metallic vehicle behind me has a premium package that rolls in a panoramic sunroof and LED headlights and costs just under $35,000. About the same price as the new competition, but keep in mind, I've seen a few Nissan dealers in my local DC area discount this car by as much as $7,000. With all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Nissan Rogue SL. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, please be sure to click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next video.